Okay, um, so we're going to quickly review uh, vectors. Uh, you're live. Okay. So you're recorded for eternity, I guess, if you do ask something. All right. Um, Vectors and relative motion. Okay. All right. First things first, what we said was a vector is something that has both a magnitude and direction. Okay. And relative motion, what we said was. when we have motions, a few different motions, that are in relation to each other. Okay? All right. So for vectors, uh, what we did was we talked about how we would uh, add vectors, how we would uh, uh, talk about vectors. So we started with very straight vectors. And uh, uh, for example, uh, an example that I gave you would be if you this was your origin, and then you moved, let's say, 30 meters to the east and then you moved 20 meters to the west okay in terms of displacement <clears throat> in terms of displacement the definition of your displacement is how far from the origin you are so in terms of displacement how much have you actually traveled 20 meters. That's correct. So your displacement is 20 meters to the west. That's it. This does not even matter. We only care about the origin and where you ended up. This is your destination. Okay? So this was pretty straightforward. And then you had a few questions where if I was to talk about, you know, moving north, moving south, and then moving north again. For example, let's say this was 10 meters north, uh, two meters south, and then six meters north, okay? If this is my origin, and I ended up here. This is the destination. Of course, imagine this was all in a straight line. Then the way you would have done it would be, well, from here to here, so that means I've traveled eight meters, and then from here to here is another six meters, so I'm about... 14 meters north from the origin, correct? So that would be your displacement. So this was pretty straightforward, right? We uh, we we talked about this already. Okay, um, but the next one th that we talked about would be a movement in 1D where you are changing your direction. Moving in 1D where you're changing a direction. So we said if I had an object or a person that traveled let's say 15 meters to the north and then 10 meters to the west, then how would I describe this motion, right? So I'll draw it out, and this, this is what we talked about vectors for tip to tail, okay? So that would be your 10 meters north, okay? And then your, sorry, I should say 15 meters north, and then your 10 meters west, Okay, and your origin and your destination. Okay, and this will be your dr. This will be your d resultant. Okay, all right. Um, this was your this was your d1. This is your d2. So this is your d1. There is your d2. Okay, and then you would do this as dr squared, which equals to d1 squared plus d2 squared. Okay, and then to get your dr, we would have square rooted it, d1 squared being 15 squared plus 10 squared. Okay, and can somebody tell me what the values are? 15 squared is 225 plus 10 squared is 100. So dr is the square root of 325, of course. 
So what do you get for your DR? 18.33, 18.03 meters. So that'll be the first step. I get my D resultant. And the next step, of course, is going to be finding out my theta, my direction. And to do my direction, I know that this is my opposite, this is my adjacent, this is my hypotenuse. Okay, so that would be tan inverse opposite over adjacent. And that would be tan inverse opposite, of course, being 10, adjacent being 15. What is your theta? Say what? 33.7, so we're going to say 34 degrees. And what would this direction be? So that would be west of north. So 34 degrees west of north. Now, as we said, there are two ways of writing it. So you, you could write this as 34 degrees west of north or 34 degrees west of north. And both of them are correct. Okay, so this was uh, this was our um, look at just vectors displacement. Okay, very straightforward. We're okay to do this. Okay, are we okay? <clears throat> I'll give you a couple of minutes to copy that down. Now, as we said, when we're doing directions, uh, just a quick review of my directions. Uh, if I'm looking at directions, I'm going to be describing them. There are two ways that you can look at them. As we said, I have this angle right here and I have this angle right here. If this is 50 degrees, of course, this will be 40 degrees. Both of them add up to 90 degrees. And the way to describe it right here, of course, this would be, how would you say this right here? 40 degrees, what would that be? Okay, so that's west of south. So 40 degrees west of south. Okay, and this right here is going to be 50 degrees south of west. Okay, so 50 degrees south of west and 40 degrees west of south. Okay, well, we talked about this one, let's say. So this will be 30 degrees east of north, and this will be 60 degrees north of east, right? And so on and so forth. So just a very quick review of how we write down directions. So we can write both of those uh, in terms of angles, 60 degrees north of east right here, and this is 30 degrees east of north right here. Okay, all right. <clears throat> now, yesterday, what we did was, or the last few days, we've been taking a look at relative motion. Relative motion. Now, what we said relative motion was usually examples of plane flying in the air. So planes, boats, swimmers, and so on and so forth. Okay? Where you have more than one motion that is taking place. And what we said was when we are describing each of these, we will describe them in terms of vectors. So for example, there will be subscripts. So if this was the plane relative, well, let's talk about the boat. So let's say it's a boat. So boat relative to the ground, boat to ground. So ground being my uh, object that is not moving for all intents and purposes. Okay, plus V, B, W, this is the boat in the water. Okay, plus the velocity of the water relative to the ground. 
two ground. So this is two water, boat relative to the water. Sometimes when you get a question, they will say the boat was traveling in still water. Still water meaning in water that's not moving. Okay, so imagine the water is not moving and my boat is traveling. What velocity did it have? So you might say that this is still water. The water moving, where the boat is moving in water, that, where the water is not moving itself. This is water that is moving. So this is in the river, for example. So imagine if I have a river that is traveling this way, and I am trying to get across to the other side. And I start on this side right here. This is my origin. Okay, now what would happen, of course, is um, uh, this, in terms of vectors, would be the velocity of the boat relative to the water. If the water was not moving, if the water was not moving, this is what my vector would look like. It would be just straight right across. Pretty straightforward. It would just be right across. Okay? But since the water is moving, so I've got to take that into account, and that would be the velocity of the water relative to the ground. So in reality, even though I want to, I'm trying to go that way here, I'm going to end up up here. So this will be the velocity of the boat relative to the ground. Right? This is how you would look at it. Cool? Okay, <clears throat> so let's do an example of this um, so that we have some numbers that we can play around with. All right, um, so let's say uh, a boat is traveling, uh, that boat is traveling at, let's say, six meters per second going north in still water. Okay, the current or the water of the river, let's say, is 2.5 meters per second going east, okay, what is the velocity of the boat of the boat relative to the ground, relative to the shore? So a person standing on the ground, on the shore, how fast do they see this boat traveling at? Okay, so I'll draw my vectors, 6 meters north, 2.5 meters east, And that would be, so is your V, B, W. There is a V, W, G. There is a V, B, G. Okay, so let's go solve for it. So we're going to have VBG squared, which equals to VBW squared plus VWG squared. Okay, so VBG, which equals to the square root of 6 squared plus 2.5 squared. What do you get? What is your VBG? How much is it? Can somebody do it? My VBG, which is the boat relative to the ground, somebody standing on the shore will see that my boat is traveling at approximately 6.5 meters per second, not at 6 meters per second. Of course, I need to have my direction because they're going to end up up here. So my direction will be tan inverse 2.5 divided by 6, and what do you get for your theta? So 23 degrees east of north. So very similar to what we did with vectors, okay? Okay.